Happy Wednesday. Welcome back to the Lorden Arts channel. I'm John Lorden. Thank you so much for joining me for today's Brain Scratch update. A case that brings out big emotions for anyone as soon as you say one simple word, Delphi. And those emotions run the gamut. On Friday, I was doing a live stream and in the chat, they started saying, there's been an arrest, been an arrest in Delphi. And admittedly, that's a little different than the message that we've been getting previously. But right off the bat, I was cautiously optimistic, I think. I, I was feeling really hesitant because of these pictures. Ron Logan, uh, the, you know, information recently came out that he was certainly being considered a suspect. And admittedly, the girls found close to his property line on his actual property. That makes sense. But do we remember Daniel Nations? You know, uh, James Brian Chadwell II, Keegan Klein, Keegan Klein's father. And these pictures having one composite released and then years later, no, 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 it's, it's not that one. We think it's, it's this guy. It has been a crazy ride in terms of trying to follow this. And I've really done my best to not get swept up in uh, every little update that comes out about this case. I want to be respectful while trying to help in the best way possible. And I think we, we wrote a, a pretty good line with that. But also, it's just because of that feeling I have of this stuff like i need i need these facts like double and triple checked before i could report on this stuff you know when i heard about the arrest i heard that you know oh there's a picture that's circulating based on information i'm seeing now there was pictures on social media that were completely wrong wrong person the guy didn't even have the same name i have no idea how those pictures started getting circulated but they were this case is so emotional because we're talking about two young girls losing their lives. We're talking about Abby and Libby, and we're talking about a family that has been working so hard to raise exposure, to be the voice that they can't be for themselves. Every single crime con I've gone to, their family has been there. And they're not just there, they are working. They were working every minute of it to help raise awareness, getting another chance at getting this case solved. Are we finally there? Despite my trepidation, I think the press conference that happened early this week was meant to send one big, clear message. Yes. Now, they didn't tell us why. There wasn't a whole lot of detail about how we came to this conclusion. I'm sort of surprised that in an area with a population of 3,000, uh, that it just it, it kind of took this long for this suspect now charged with murder to be figured out or or for the investigation to to kind of come back to that just after all these years i was starting to think this has to be someone that was passing through in some way but indeed that's where we we are so we're here to talk about richard allen the man arrested last friday what can we learn about him and with this case, this case in terms of media and social media, it just has a life of its own. And we're already seeing some things where people are kind of running off in certain directions. There's an alias that has been attached to Richard Allen. It looks like that information might not be super accurate. We're going to try to cut through all this stuff and, and just try to figure out who is this person? Uh, does it make sense that he's the one that did this? And what are the next steps? What are the next steps that this family is, is these two families are going to be facing in all this? I almost think about them as one family now because of how they're forever connected as a result of this case. Thankfully, we do have a couple of news organizations doing some pretty good work. Uh, I, I think they were just feeling the same thing all of us were. We, we wanted to understand more. We wanted more information about this guy. How does he fit into this? There's more information about him. I don't know that there's great information about how he fits into this. I can't find any real information in terms of whatever the big thing was that turned the investigation in this direction. 
but uh, let's let's take a look at what we do know, know starting at independent.co.uk. Richard Allen is a 50-year-old married man. Of course, he was arrested last Friday. His uh, middle name is Matthew. He is from Delphi, Indiana. It looks like he's lived there uh, since about 2006, but grew up in Indiana. Here they're saying the photo bears some likeness to the police sketches of the suspect, which were released to the public over the course of the investigation while the teenager's killer remained at large. And I just wanted to bring up the sketches once again. One of the first things I was wondering was which one of these sketches is supposed to be him. I think it's obviously not the one on the left. It's not the newer sketch. Uh, the one on the right, possibly, but I seem to recall when they switched the sketches out that they put out the word they were not looking for this person anymore. So let's rewind time just a little bit and pull up an article from IndyStar.com. This is from back when the second sketch came out. Let's just see what they say about it. The man depicted in an old sketch released to the public two years ago is no longer believed to be the person who killed teens Abigail Williams and Liberty German in Delphi, Indiana, state police said. So kind of like I remembered it. I don't know if they identified this person, if they actually found the person that matched the photo and said, oh, okay, we've ruled him out. He's not a suspect. But it seemed like a very clear message when this second composite came out that that first one was not valid anymore. The man in the 2017 sketch was a person of interest in the investigation during that period, police said. Investigators believe the man shown in a sketch released during a press conference on Monday more accurately represents the person who killed the teens. And here, I mean, we've got obvious age differences. I mean, the way this guy is being depicted, it looks like he's someone uh, much younger than 40 to 50 years old. Interesting point here. While both sketches were drawn in 2017, police clarified that the renderings are not the same person. So both these sketches produced around the same time. Uh, they knew that they had two separate sketches. What I'm interested by in that is, is there two different eyewitnesses that saw something suspicious? Maybe something suspicious for one of them was some guy that was hanging around the parking lot too long. And that's where we get composite number one. Then they figure out, like, quite honestly, guys, I've always felt like composite number one in terms of a match, at least for the people that have been discussed around this case, I think Daniel Nations is the closest match for composite number one. Maybe they did figure that out through the investigation. If you remember, uh, it wasn't too long after the investigation kicked off that all of a sudden this guy was brought up and kind of quickly dismissed. So at that point, was that when they knew that the composite sketch that they had was likely not the right one, but it took them a little time to actually release a second? This is all purely theorizing at this point because we don't know they're just they're not being very upfront about that but there are clear messages here composite sketch number one we don't think that's the guy composite sketch two we do think that's the guy uh the old sketch shows a man in the age range of 40 to 50 according to police he appears to be older than the newly re released sketch which appears to depict a much younger man uh looks like he, he could be and even here they're saying he could be 20s to 30s could it be that that first sketch kind of came back into the investigation is one thing that I'm wondering. Uh, maybe there was some reason why they ruled out that sketch previously and then some new piece of information comes in that says, no, 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 that first sketch that you had, that was actually the right direction to go back at the time. Sergeant Kim Riley declined to explain to Andy Starr why investigators now believe the sketch provides a more accurate representation. Quote, the investigation tips and leads have pointed us in a different direction, Riley said. So honestly, I think that that doesn't rule out the possibility that this sketch on the right could have been Richard Allen or some form of him. And, you know, of the two sketches, which one is he more likely a match for? Obviously, the one on the right. Uh, particularly we've got the facial hair that is a, a pretty good match for him as well. You know, if we take that hat and throw it on his head, like this is, this is a possibility here, but quite honestly, maybe both sketches are out at this point. I know that they have to be very tight lipped about the investigation with these charges now. And, you know, they're doing some interesting things in terms of the files or 
actually kind of being locked up where media can't even get access to them when usually for an arrest like this, there would be some public information starting to trickle out. None of that's happening right now. I really wish that uh, during the press conference they did this week that maybe they just thought of, hey, there's a few things we kind of need to clear up with the public. I think that would have been one of them. Just, you know, this, it would have been so simple. I don't think it would have risked any possible prosecution to say those two sketches that we had out before, uh, the investigation shifted. Neither of those sketches is, is the actual person at this point. But let's continue learning about Richard Allen. Before his sudden arrest on Friday, Mr. Allen's name had never before been publicly linked to the murders. It's not clear what information has led to Mr. Allen's arrest more than five years on from the 2017 slayings. At the time of the murders, Mr. Allen would have been 44 years old. Local resident of Delphi, where the girls lived with their families, obviously. According to online records, he's lived in Delphi since at least 2006, Indiana his whole life. He is married, also a father, works as a pharmacy technician, receiving his most recent pharmaceutical license in February of 2018. Uh, Mr. Allen appears to have no prior criminal record. This is the other thing that quite honestly, I, I, I know there's a lot of people that are upset at the press conference. I saw the online buzz that happened right out of it, uh, right after it. And quite honestly, I had some feelings about the press conference as well. It's just felt like that could have been a press release that was released on Friday. You know, this guy has been taken in. We are charging him with two counts of murder. Like that would have been enough, I think, because really that's all the information that we got at the press conference on Monday. Um, but one of the things that I think might have been decent to drop there for the public's understanding of what's going on is Mr. Allen appears to have no prior criminal record. Quite honestly, that is somewhat helpful in terms of understanding the challenges that law enforcement had with this case, this guy doesn't have a record. They didn't have anything to tie back to and say, well, oh, we've got this person. He lives in the area. Look at his previous history. He's done crimes that could lead up potentially to something like this. They don't have that. So honestly, just in the eyes of how the public is viewing law enforcement in this case, uh, it, it could have been helpful to them, which obviously is, is not their their biggest priority, I, I would hope, their biggest priority is trying to be helpful to the family. Quite honestly, for me, coming out of that press conference, I was wondering how was that helpful to the family too. So I was just, I, I didn't quite understand what the focus of the press conference was outside of, here's a picture of the guy, he's been charged for murder. Yes, we think this is the guy. That's, that's really the message that they wanted to get out. However, the Carroll County Jail record lists Mr. Allen is also going by the alias of Craig Ross Rentfro. So in another example of information kind of starting to spiral, we now get this other name. And does that mean that there's a possibility that there is actually a criminal record that has been somewhat hidden because this guy uses a different name? Maybe there's charges under those names. I don't think so. In an interesting turn, there's a thread on Reddit that is discussing this aspect of the case. For some reason, the moderators have decided to remove, the original post has now been completely removed, but some of the responses are still there and you can tell they're obviously talking about this aspect. This is unconfirmed at this point, but we have other information that kind of supports this possibility. That's why I'm sharing it with you guys here, but I just wanna be clear, this is a post on Reddit. I don't know who this person is. He's saying, I know Craig from his daughter's text quote, he was being discharged at the same time as Rick and they made an error. He let his boss know what happened and is currently seeking an attorney. I don't know what he means being discharged at the same time as Rick discharged from what, uh, from what I can see, Rick has no criminal record. Obviously. Uh, I also went looking for myself. I couldn't find anything on him, but they're saying this Craig guy is a real person. He's someone else. And his Facebook has blown up since this and he's had threats. It's an unfortunate mistake, but not in any way connected. There's other posts that talk about um, some things here. If you go looking for Craig for information on him in Indiana, you can find it. And he's a bit younger, five to seven years younger, it seems like, than Richard. 
Um, here we've got a reference to a lawsuit that was against him that was dropped at some point in Carroll County. This was in November of 2013. Uh, there's a police blotter for him being arrested at the age of 28 uh, in charge of failure to appear. This one from back in 2009. If you do the math on that, he's uh, 41 currently. So, you know, about nine years younger than Richard Allen. So uh, somehow it seems like unless he is using that alias and there is actually this real Craig guy as well, uh, it seems like it's just some kind of goof with the data that came out. And we're going to see an article that actually has a screenshot where you, I'll show you where, where all this stuff is coming from. But back to the possibilities of Richard Allen and him being connected to this property records do show that him and his wife have a home that is a half mile from Delphi Community Middle School. That's where Abby and Libby were going to school. On top of that, his house also about two and a half miles from the crime scene here, uh, which does raise an interesting point. I know through some of the information that came out recently, they were saying that um, it's extremely likely that the suspect had blood on them after committing this. Uh, two and a half miles. I don't think this guy is, is walking that two and a half miles after this. It could be that the vehicle that he used for that transportation might have some form of evidence in it. From what I'm seeing, I'm not seeing anything about a vehicle uh, being collected. We are going to learn a little bit about uh, some search efforts that happened on Friday. Um, but for instance, if there was a vehicle that he had at the time and then he got rid of it soon after, like that could be comp pretty compelling information uh, in a case like this. We don't have that. And of course, that vehicle could be evidence. But um, despite not having a criminal history, it does say that WRTV found two speeding tickets for him, one from 2011, another one from 2005, and also a seatbelt violation in 2003. Nothing real serious uh, here. He's a 1991 graduate of North Miami Senior High School in Miami County. So I have also found references to a few photos that are becoming particularly big items of interest. Let's go ahead and jump over to heavy.com. In 2018, Alan's wife posted a photo of their daughter on the same bridge. I can totally understand why this picture is a pretty obvious item of interest with everything around this case at this point, but there's another one. In addition, he was photographed in December, 2021 in a Delphi bar with his wife sitting in front of what appears to be a police sketch of the Delphi killer. Uh, this one, you know, here's him and his wife. And obviously back here, they do have a composite sketch number two that's on the wall behind him. I don't know that this one is particularly interesting. We know that this is a small community. This is a guy that would go with his wife to the local bar three or four times a week, according to staff that works there. Uh, just look at this picture. He's not taking this picture. He hasn't framed this picture for making sure that that photo's in there. Uh, I don't know if this is a selfie being taken by his wife or if this might be being taken by someone else that's at the bar. Uh, but it does note that the owner of the bar, Bob Matlock, says we would carry on conversations about it. He would say, you know, it's such a tragedy. And we'd say we felt sorry for the families and all that. But we tried not to talk about it too much because we all knew the families. And uh, here's another photo of him with the picture. It's this kind of stuff is just... Um, I understand why people are interested in it. Is it particularly helpful or is it some kind of tell about the case? I don't think so. I, especially, I mean, he's not holding, if this was a selfie that he took and he framed it that way and that photo was behind him like that, I would think that there might be something to it. But with the zoomed out version, it's pretty obvious he's not actually holding this camera. Now, the only piece of information about why this arrest possibly happened is this little stretch right here. Uh, according to Fox 59, neighbors said police were digging up a fire pit in Allen's backyard the week before his arrest. Uh, I'm curious what would be at the fire pit. Uh, I know according to some of that information that came out lately, it there was mention that maybe some things were taken from the girls, some things that could be seen as trophies. I've seen other references that said it possibly might have been clothing. Could it be that those items wound up in the fire pit? Possibly. There's also very likely a weapon, uh, even though it hasn't really been clearly divulged what the weapon is. Could that 
weapon have tried to been destroyed in the fire pit, possibly clothing that the suspect was wearing another possibility. Um, interesting to me that basically, you know, police are digging up the fire pit the week leading up to his arrest and then he's taken into custody, but we don't know that that might be related directly to the arrest. It, it might not. Victim Notification Network Vinelink shows bookings for Allen in both Carroll and White counties and shows he uses the alias Craig Ross Rentfro. A man on Facebook with that name told people who asked in his comment threads that he has nothing to do with Allen and doesn't know him. Thankfully, uh, we at least have that information coming with it on Heavy. I'm seeing many, many articles where they're just talking about the alias and they're not making any clarification that there's another man in the area that lives by that name. Um, so here's an actual screenshot of what they're, and I'm thankful they did this too. You can see the alias right down here in the second part of the record. It's certainly there. Um, is it really a data goof? That's what it seems at this point. Uh, I would just say be very, very cautious with that information. I don't think that a whole lot's going to pan out from that. Um, his wife's Facebook page is now deleted think that's uh, something that's going to happen in cases like this. I don't think that's really a sign one way or another. And one last thing that I wanted to bring up that is kind of a touch point with this case, and I have seen some confirmation from a news agency about this as well. Uh, it says a relative of German appears to confirm that he served them. He works at the local CBS when they went there to get photographs printed for the girls' funerals, and he actually gave the photos to the family for free. I have seen confirmation that that actually did happen. Um, once again, this, this information is kind of the best that's out there. And really all we're getting is a solid confirmation that this is someone that worked and lived in the community, a small community where you're probably very likely have crossed paths with the German and the Williams family. So it's, Unfortunately, it's all that's out there at this point, and I'm sure more information will be coming. Uh, reported over at grunge.com, Allen has pleaded not guilty. And they bring up a little bit of an interesting point here. It's also unclear if Allen was connected to Ron Logan, owner of the property where the girls were found. There might be something there. Just my brain, of course, is trying to come to terms with how is this person connected to all this? Uh, how do you take someone that has no criminal history and they do something like this? Uh, is there some possibility that there's more than one person that's responsible for this? Is Ron Logan part of that equation? Is this possibly some type of, like, did he not like Ron Logan and that's why he, he left them on his property? I don't know. I don't know. But it does raise that question about connectivity with several of the other people uh, that we've talked about here, these these ends that were kind of brought up as investigative possibilities in this case, and then never really sealed off outside of, of nations. I'm pretty sure that this one was closed off pretty solidly, but um, it does kind of raise the possibility. Is there some connectivity here to one of the other people that have been discussed with this case? They're also pointing out here that Logan, who died earlier this year, reportedly gave a false alibi to police about where he was the day of the murders. I believe that his phone actually pinged that he was still in the area when he said he was somewhere else. Um, that's all the information out right now on Richard Allen. And really, it depends on what's going to happen with these records. Are the courts going to keep them sealed? Uh, sometimes what we see in cases like that is you'll actually have news agencies that will essentially start filing their own lawsuit to try to get that stuff released with a case of this nature. Um, I don't know because we're talking extremely young victims. So I think keeping the, the case sealed up uh, right up until basically, you know, the, the trial starts, it might be a possibility with this one. Uh, do I think that some news agency is going to try to compel the courts to release it? Yes, I'm sure that that's actually already going on in the background in some way. Um, but I don't know, for for the sake of the family and what they're going through, I, it's very few families that have faced what this family has faced with, with this level of exposure. 
on this case. And I know it's a weird thing because you're like, John, at the start of the video, you're talking about how hard they worked to raise exposure. They did. But sometimes these things, like I mentioned, take a life of their own. And there has been, there has been good information released to be helpful about this case. And there's been a lot of other types of information. There's been a lot of other types of coverage. A lot of it really hasn't been the most helpful. If I remember right, I think I, re I even remember law enforcement complaining about uh, social media, like negatively impacting the case kind of in the early days. They, they seem to have kind of backed off on that as time went on. But the most important thing to remember here is what these families are going through. And Becky Patty has a post here from October 29th saying, at long last, we have a face to go with our monster. I sit here wondering, now what? Where do we go from here? Unfortunately, the path from here is certainly not going to be easier on this family. If he sticks with a not guilty plea, this family is going to have to essentially relive this tragedy in slow motion and at a level of detail that it, it makes my stomach churn just thinking about what they're going to have to go through. Do I think they, they are willing to do it? I know they are, but it, it's not going to make it any easier. I realize our lives have again made a big change. We have a very difficult path to start down. It's a path we will gladly face as we know each step taken is one step closer to our monster being convicted. Knowing that makes that walk so much easier. I want to thank everyone who has supported and prayed for our girls daily for five and a half years, who never gave up, who grew to love them. I know they're smiling down on the world today, knowing it is now a little bit safer. We heard several times during the press conference this week, today is the day. Today is the day. I think this case is probably on the top of most of our lists of cases I would most like to see solved. And... I think we just took a big, big step towards that, but we got to see a conviction in this case. Quite honestly, that's more important to me than having any level of understanding, any more detail about what happened on that terrible, terrible day. I would have loved it if we could have just fast forwarded to a press conference with the DA saying convicted, serving life in prison. Um, I wish we could do that for the family, essentially, but we know we can't. And this is still a path of, I'm sure it's it's going to be at least a year, maybe two years before we actually see this thing get to trial. Uh, I know there's a tentative date right now, but I know that stuff is going to slide. There's going to be pretrial motions. There's going to be all kinds of stuff unless, uh, unless Richard Allen kind of all of a sudden changes his plea, but We'll see what happens with this. Uh, thank you guys so much. I hope you appreciate the approach that I took with this case. I didn't want to over-report it. I didn't want to tap on every single new little twist that happened, especially because I was starting to get this sense of like, wow, I don't know how reliable this information is, even though it's coming from law enforcement because we, we practically had a new name every year. This one's a little different. We've, we've got an arrest. We've got charges filed. I hope this is the one. I hope this is the path to, to justice for this, for both these families. Thank you guys so much. Please come back on Friday for a brand new Unsolved Mystery right here on the Lord and Arts channel.